The bat has the power capacity of 30 kilowatts and can actually effectively power 12 homes. It's never meant for large grid powering, but more for uh, places in, in outlying areas. And this, this specific one is supposed to be going to Alaska for an 18-month study. Reimagining proven aerospace technology, the bat uses an inflatable helium shell to lift a lightweight turbine into the air. Power is sent to the ground using high-strength conductive tethers. The BAT also offers a unique platform to expand internet and phone services, weather monitoring, and much more. Designed to be rapidly deployed anywhere, the BAT significantly reduces human and wildlife impact. It looks pretty promising, but some people have their doubts. I love stories about renewable energy, mm -hmm. new um, inventions and devices that will help us with that. I get that wind turbines take up a lot of open space and they use a lot of steel. So any innovation in that department is great. But this video and the information that I found on it just brings up a whole new slew of questions for me, starting with the fact that it uses helium. Mm -hmm. to raise this, um, who we're calling it maybe a blimp or a high altitude turbine. It's a helium inflatable is a, helium but ring. But helium is a very scarce, non-renewable resource that we are quickly depleting. I mean, it doesn't stay in our atmosphere. Any helium that comes in kind of pretty much just disappears almost instantly. There is an organization um, which has a helium reserve, mm -hmm. and they are saying that within 40 years we will have depleted our resources in helium. It's almost, for me, like using fossil fuel to power um, the motor that rotates solar panels. It's it's not a win-win situation because you're just using one resource versus another. Why did you bring that up? Because I hadn't even considered that helium was not a renewable resource. I, I don't know that much about helium. Uh, can you Can you expound on that a little bit? Um, well, I, we have um, basically the resources that we do have from helium we're now getting from pools of natural gas. Texas is pretty much, I think, in the forefront on that oh. um, department. And But it's, I want to say, don't quote me on this statistic, but I think it's 0 0.2 or 0 0.3 percent of helium in natural gas pools. So we're draining it a little bit from there, but it's so expensive to separate it from the rest of natural gas that we are just depleting quickly our resources, not just with party balloons and, you know, decor, but again, the rocket launches and the medical imaging, which we use a lot of it for. That's I think it's point. just, it, it's just using what, okay, so we're not using steel, we're not occupying large parcels of land, but we are depleting ourselves from something else. I think that we're at a point where we should be able to come up with solutions that address all of those issues okay. simultaneously. First of all, let me say, I have not had balloons at a birthday party in at least 15 <laughs> years. I'm doing my part. Oh, I'm gonna throw you a party with balloons. <laughs> Think of the environment. <laughs> you need balloons at a party. And a clown? And a bounce castle? That's what this story's about now. No, okay, so um, what I took away from this article is that these wind turbines are not for replacing the wind farms that we have now. These are more for bringing to, setting up quickly for disaster relief, for remote areas that aren't suitable for wind farms, mm -hmm. um, for mm -hmm. temporary use, um, for like out of the way remote mines and like middle of the ocean just oil rig really type Basically really off the grid yeah. areas. Um, and that way you can provide electricity to these areas for much cheaper than it would have to have diesel generators, which I'm sure impact the environment more than any sort of helium depletion that you could take from one to 10 of these, is my guess. I would like to see a net kind of um, energy calibration. Like, I would like to see what the net energy that they get out of this is versus all the energy put in to not only manufacture these, but actually put them in place in these locations and mm -hmm. disaster relief. and. Um, I think with that data, I'd be a little bit more comfortable forming an opinion. I don't want it to be an, an educated guess. I'd like to see. I, I, there was a couple of stats. I know it was uh, 30 kilowatts um, uh, capacity, and th there was a, but it, there wasn't a lot of information. I tried looking for it, and I couldn't find anything. And of course, I'm very obstinate, so I was just focused on the helium and and the birds and. Well, I no. actually had a friend whose job it was one summer to go around wind farms and count the number of dead bats on the ground 
because apparently bats don't do so well in wind farms. They can't find their way around, they smack into something, and then that's it. Yeah. I can't imagine that removing all of that steel would result in the same sort of animal deaths because certainly the, the impact area is less. Yeah. So yes, maybe birds will hit it, but still it's an inflatable instead of a, a steel girder. Yeah. So my, I, again, I don't have any real information yeah. <laughs> on that, but I think it's probably better. Yeah, my only issue is with them calling it fully renewable. Is there anything alternative we can do to this alternative, I guess? Because it does seem like, yes, it's very taxing on the environment to have it, despite it being so small, or no, well, I guess small in relative terms. I, we say taxing, right now there's only one in Alaska. Mm -hmm. So there, I don't think their plan is to incorporate these into large grids and like have permanent installations. But I don't know. I don't know what their, their game is. And if there's any alternatives to our alternatives, I don't know them either. But I'm willing to, to read about them. All right. So the bat looks very exciting, at least prospectively. But maybe it's not really a great long-term solution. What do you think of the bat inflatable turbine? Let us know below in the comments. And please be sure to subscribe.